Hello there, this is Russ Buecher from Controlman Icon. In this video, we're going to take a look at batch shooting. You can use batch shooting to embed data into the folder name or file name or to the IPTC metadata of your image file. This is very useful if you're shooting products or you're in a lab or doing school photos. When you do one of these large volume shoots, you may have a data file or a printout and that might have a unique identifier of the object that you're about to shoot and maybe a name or a UPC code and a description of how you could shoot it and maybe even an internal tracking number for your own billing system. So we could take that data, import it into Control My Icon, or access that data as an external database and embed that data into a folder file names, and image metadata. So let's see how we can do that. The first thing we need to do is go up to the Workflows menu and down to Batch. This brings up the Batch Workflow tab. Now initially there's not much in here, but I do have data preloaded in the system and when you install Control My Icon it comes with some test data. And if you type in the number 1 and press the Enter key or click on the activate button, it will return this information. So we have a job, which is this identifier here, and normally a job is a group of data. BD1, which means batch data one, is Teresa, batch data two, Ellis, full, and so on. You can have up to nine items of batch data. This number here is your BID or your batch ID. And we have some other data here. I'll type in two. And you see how it changes. Let's try taking a shot and we'll embed this data into the captured image. So I'll connect to a D800. And we'll go into Live View. And I have this test object. So let's embed this batch data into the captured images. So you can do this in Live View or outside of Live View, but I'll just stay in Live View for now and I'll click on Shoot. And then we'll go to the image browser. So when I look at my captured image, I could see the EXIF data, and this data here is populated by the camera body, so we don't populate anything here. But if you look at the IPTC data, we could see that it's all blank. Now this is where we can embed our batch data to. So we could put that first name or last name or anything that we had in BD1 to BD9 in our batch data. We can put it here. We can also embed this data as part of the folder name and the file name. Now the way we do that is with tokens. If we look over here where the folder is stored, we can add a file token. So this is at, which is the token identifier, and job. And we have a list of all these right up here. Under configuring files and folders. Here's our folder tokens. I will use at job, but you can see we could also use the batch ID, BD1, all the way through to BD9. And we could do the same thing with file name tokens. You'll just need to ensure that the type of data that you are putting in a folder or a file meets with the restrictions of Windows file naming. So you couldn't put a backslash or an asterisk as part of your data if you intend to put it in folder or file names. But if you're putting into IPTC data, there is no restriction. So I'll go job here. And instead of a counter like this, we will use the batch ID CTR. So this is the counter for this particular batch ID. And batch ID in this case is number two. So I'll activate it. And now we'll shoot. Now we'll see that the folder that the image is saved in is now this. That is the job. 
which corresponds to the job token. So Z images slash at job is this. This is a good way to keep your files organized. Now let's look at the file name. We had one called BIDCTR. This is the batch ID counter. Now you could use a regular main counter or a date time type of token if you like. BID counter is special in that it keeps track of the number of images that you have shot in this folder for a particular batch ID. So your batch ID is two. And this is the first image under that batch ID. Let's take another shot. Now this is the second shot. And you see it starts at zero and increments by one. Now we can change the number of leading zeros here. So if we go to Tools menu, Preferences, and under Miscellaneous, this is the batch ID counter. So right now we're saying we can have as many as three leading zeros, which we had here. And you can change this if you like. Now it's a good idea to use this batch ID counter because let's say you're taking a shot and you've completed the three shots that you wanted of that particular object and then you decide well we're going to use now a different batch ID so I'll type in number one and activate it you can see the data here is a little bit different so now if we shoot well that's the same job but now it's batch ID one and this is the first image of batch ID one we'll take another shot maybe another shot Let's say you now realize that, whoops, you needed one more shot out of that other batch ID. So you go back to batch ID 2. But if you look at batch ID 2, we had shot 0, shot 1, and shot 2. The next one should be shot 3. So by using batch ID counter, it'll keep track of the current batch counter. There it is, batch ID 2, number 3. So zero, one, two, three. So this is a very good way to organize your folders and images. But you can embed this data into the IPTC data fields of your image as well. That way, this information stays inside the image and it'll remain inside an actual JPEG. And if you're using raw images like a .nef, it will exist in a .xmp file sidecar file. So this data will always travel with the actual data file. So that's really useful if you're going to be sending these files somewhere, such as a third party processor. They may have a certain expectation of what your file and folder name should be, so you can set it here in Controlman icon, but they also may need to have some file in certain IPTC fields so that they can search for it on their archiving system. So let's try embedding some of this information here. Now the IPTC names you see here are standard IPTC names, so we really can't change these. But if we open up the view menu and go down to metadata, we can enter information here for each one of these fields. So city, city, copyright, copyright. And we have a separate video tutorial on how to do metadata. But let's say here for this, I want to just put in Vancouver as a city. And then I'll save it as a profile. If I shoot, it's going to put Vancouver here. Okay. But with batch, I want to have, let's say, the first name and the second name here. So I'll go here and I'll put in a token, batch data one, batch data two, and you can go all the way to batch data nine. You can have the job here, transmission reference could be batch ID. Now 
and I'll save it. And now when I shoot, it will take this batch data and embed it in the IPTC data. So now you can use the Control My Icon search function to search for this data. Or if you're using another application such as Adobe Bridge or ACDC or some other image archiving software, you can search for this. So if one of your clients calls up and says, can we get a reprint of Sean Torres? You can just type it in and find it right away. Now the images that we're capturing here also appear here. And this is a mini browser, just like the rest of our workflows. You can control which information is set here. So if you right click and go to configure, you can put a thumbnail here. I'll just move it up to the top. And we have a histogram, file name. Let's say I wanted to go down here and say I want city, country, description, and transmission reference. Now anytime you capture these images, it's also going to show it here. So capture another and if I go to batch change batch ID capture it again you can see that data is appearing here and you can widen this if you like so if you were using all nine fields of batch data you could populate this vertically and you can move it like this as well if you need to. So this is a good way to have something like live view here with your product and being able to review your captured images. You can flip between live view and browser easily and you can map a keyboard shortcut to do this if you like. But you can also just click on an image here and press the W key on the keyboard to get it full screen and then you can explore the image by double clicking on it to bring up the image magnifier. Press the W key again to close it. So this allows you to compose your image in live view, enter a batch ID, review the data, and then capture it and embed that data in the image and then review that image. You can use the arrow keys here to go between the different images. Now in some workflows, after you get things tweaked out and set up just right, you may want it to just shoot every time you activate a code. So let's say we type in 2 and activate. So it saves you from having to press the shoot button. You can also hook up a barcode scanner to control my icon to help automate the entry of the batch ID. Because normally when you enter a batch ID, you have to type in the number and press enter or press activate. So you can make that easier by using a barcode scanner. And to configure a barcode scanner, you just go to the tools menu, down to preferences, over to scanner, and just fill in the information about your scanner. then enable it and you could test it just with any barcode that was a barcode off a can of compressed air this barcode scanner cost about eighty dollars US I'll just leave that enabled you can see here when we scan it it said it's not found so it does not exist in the database and if we try to capture another image none of that information is going to be embedded. But as soon as we go back and get a valid batch ID and shoot, then you can see it is back to being embedded in the folder name, file name, and IPTC data. So the next part of batch shooting is importing 
data. Now you can import data from a text file or from another database via an ODBC database driver. And if you don't want to import data, you can even have it just do an external query to another ODBC database. And I have an example here where I'm connected to a Microsoft SQL Server database on this computer. And I'll just type in 3 as a batch ID. And you can see it accessed that database without us having to import it into Control My Icon at all. And now if I take a shot, this information will be embedded. We have a separate tutorial video on how to import data into Control My Icon for batch shooting and how to configure ODBC queries to access data. That's it. That's how you do batch shooting in Control My Icon. Happy tethering.